just only on the aspects that are left about it. And so that's actually what it started me to look more into that. However, my first foray into it was more like jumping into the deep end of the swimming pool. I to New York. I Part of the reason 
why I was even attracted to that was because a few years prior, I found myself in a very similar relationship. So it was something that I could relate to in a way. Um, it is different being in a relationship with someone who is, well, what they will buy and then suffers through an accident and becomes uh, permanently disabled. And um, the stares that you get in public and the misconceptions and people judging you, parents being like, no, you can't do this because of X, Y, and Z. So the story is one that I, whenever I present it on social media, I always tell people you're going to need tissues around. It is a very sad one, it's a very tragic one, but at the same time, there's beauty in pain and the obstacles that they both of them face. Um, it recently wrapped up with 12 volumes. Um, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It's, it's a beautiful story. And it touches on uh, several things that women deal with, um, including fertility issues as you get older as well. So it's, a, it's one that tackles a lot of different issues. So that's what I was going to ask <laughs> So yeah, so you were all touching on um, a lot of why children end up in the Um Are there enough? Are they out there? Or could there be more? Oh, is there, is there enough? Do you feel like there's enough children out there? Yeah. 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 Ye
to buy story out of this like, well that's just a beautiful, highly recommended, and it seems, it's written by women, it's a writer, it seems very, from like the woman's point of view, but like, I don't see, I wouldn't, yeah, I would not classify it as women at all. Mm -hmm. um, but if it technically falls in that budget, and people who are looking for those things won't find it, even though it's super duper Jose to me. <laughs> Um, which is, I guess, maybe one of the problems of like just audiences being able to discover more Jose genre, but it is maybe in all of the genres. So how, I guess one of the things is like maybe more publicity or talking about it, people who read them, talking about them online and like letting people know what the story is about. Um, so like, oh, I saw that in the, this section, so maybe it actually isn't what you know, it was labeled as. Um, um, I'm trying to think when I started posting it on TikTok, um, there wasn't very many creators speaking about um, series that follow adults, um, and even less about Joker Mom specifically. So, um, an audience frequently just dropped onto like, my content, and they kept demanding, like, oh, can you please share more stories that you know, I can relate to? Because they were kind of on the same boat as me. Um, I mean, we can still enjoy the shoujo and the shonen manga, but we just wanted stories that we could relate to and that we can make uh, connections to. So another one that, like Deb said, like there's kind of a, almost be like a gray area, especially when it comes to Satan and Jose. But one that led me to even more um, series was Swento, which is. Um, technically, again, a statement, but it's written in. It's written by Yeah. It's written by Yeah, but um, it has such a very unique uh, woman's point of view that, uh, especially if you are. Oh, uh, a sudden so we have a, a woman who is um, an accountant, very insecure about her sweating. She has a, like, a physical condition that she just. Refused to be sluts. So as a child, she used to get bullied and made fun of. Um, she would get called a, a stinko instead of a sapo. And um, so she always grew up very insecure about her body and also her sense. And um, as an adult, she winds up working for the place that brought her comfort, which was the soap company. And then from there, in the lobby, as she was admiring the soaps, a, the soap developer walks by, gets a whiff of her sense. It sounds very weird, <laughs> but um, he has a bit of her son and immediately feels drawn to her and feels inspired by the son. Um, so from there, they kind of form a little, uh, like, you know, like, can you help me out with the latest launch and I'll give you the soap, basically. But they develop feelings from one another, embark on a very beautiful and realistic relationship. There's art way, there's crying between them, like you see the ups and downs being the parents moving in together. And it's a really cute twice of life that I feel many adults, especially in their late twenties, early thirties, can just relate to. So from there, you know, um, I've seen other TikTok creators also discuss Jose and recommend that. So the community has grown significantly since uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. I would actually have to add that, you know, it's, I apologize, I don't want to know. To the point about not only just how you categorize it, growing, you know, content in a group, letting people know that the storyline is really good and relatable, there is a societal stigma also, subconsciously, that women don't really talk about all these topics, or if we do, then there is some sort of rebuttal or question or trying to explain what Jose Nava is to moment to some people would be like, to look at it and be like, oh, it's poor? <laughs> or, oh, I didn't know women talked about sex. Like, there seems to be an even deeper underlying societal, you know, aspect to that as well, because at the same time, Women love outlander and Bridgerton. <laughs> so there needs to be kind of a crossover into that for them to understand that women can read about manga about sex. 
sex complicated relationship and not be called, I didn't realize this was porn, or I thought this was for treatment. There is really no need for something like that. And so sometimes companies will also maybe not categorize it, right? Or maybe we don't want to talk about it, or but when you do, it actually catches on and then grow this community. So I think overall, Japan as a society, America, and also other countries around the world, there's still something that women have to fight for on a to level. And that I think crosses over to everything, moms like politicians, all of that stuff.
So it's that demographic, but also the style of storytelling. Because I feel like it, um, something that does make Jose Shoujo different from Shonen is the storytelling. So um, I still keep the label, but I think we can probably expand onto those labels and um, create a more, not only inclusive community, but um, also expand on what it means to provide content for women. Providing content for women. Um, yeah. So in your experience as teachers, as creators, as um, journalists, um, how have you found, and then how do you, how do you get in that spot to the audience? That there is an actual point to create stories for women and stuff. Um, well, Wall Street Diaries is my first uh, graphic novel, um, which is a series of, or a collection of five short stories um, about a young adult woman. Um, and it was like, was the first story, it was the very first topic that I wrote, which is Wall Street. And it was, I was very, uh, I have a very strict, like point of view of the type of story that I want to create. And I honestly worry sometimes about is there a place for my kind of story? Um, because it's not YA, uh, and I don't necessarily care to write like middle grade for YA or you know, those kinds of things, which are a lot more popular when it comes to graphic novels. Um, so I just had no plans or hopes or thoughts that I would ever have a graphic novel about that is about four adult black women that is, you know, talking about their friendship, talking about the black uh, her mother hair and the importance of black hair and doing hair. Uh, something that's very niche, you know, a lot of stuff I just didn't see in the bookstore. Um, and there's sex, there's drugs, there's cursing, and so I would get a lot of people who would come to me like, oh, I'm going to buy this with my daughter. I'm like, how old is she? <laughs> and um, because they just assume like common kids or common teens YA the most. And I'm like, well, it is this, 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 and this. It's not really that extreme, but I'm not trying to get down that I can. Um, and so I, um, but as looking out and people started posting reviews, one of my goals too as a creator is I want, especially like more black and brown women to this to be their first comic that they read. Um, like if they just didn't see themselves comics so they just didn't ever decide to read them. I've seen a lot of people who are mostly like bookstagrammers, people who read like books and you know, just posted about that, you know, this is my first graphic novel. I didn't know they they comic like I see myself, oh my god, I really much. I know it could be like this mature, um, and which is super validating for me. And they're like, we want more, is there going to be more? I'm like, I don't know, I mean, it's so sort of like, I want this to happen, but I also, um, I, I personally know like, I just, all I want to pitch is this stuff, but what I see getting published isn't necessarily this stuff. And so I hope Flash Day helps kind of make I hope it does well, <laughs> and I hope it allows other creators to kind of push themselves to create, you know, beyond YA. Um, but a lot of it kind of is up to larger publishers, which is why I kind of just focus on self-publishing, which is a whole difficult thing in itself, um, but at least I have more control. Um, so <coughs> it's weird. So my biggest category is YA. I'm like, whatever, like, if it sells, it sells, but I'm not calling it YA. Um, <coughs> you know, have a, like, what is it, adult comp, graphic mm -hmm. novel, which is just, it's not specific towards women or not by their folks. It's, you know what I mean? People might think of Washington when they think of adult graphic novels. That's not what I'm doing, <laughs> so I think even, like, the, the genre, like, and publishing when it comes to graphic novels and comics. 
in um, West on the West is just needs to kind of catch up. But I don't think they're even thinking of adult women as a demographic. Well, they are in but a lot of it in pros. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, pros for sure. Like they're they're fed <laughs> very much <laughs> in pros, and that's what I hope is like they the pros folks. You know, maybe they'll start to see more graphic novels and be like, oh, I can get the same kind of stories that I'm getting in these pros books. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you know, for me, I think um, I do personal development. So, I mean, I'm not the person who's doing it. I can't just, you know, sit there so I'm going to be here and I'm going to be able to do that. So, I said, well, this would be the perfect way to test out some of my curriculum ideas. So um, I'm like the comics professor on campus. And so um, of course AM is like dumb in my ear. But then also, <laughs> you know, my students are like, we get to read, you know, um, for example, uh, Kissy, which, you know, is technically, you know, um, why you know it's more show go. But because Kyoko is independent, living on her own, she's living an adult life. You know, and, and then it's been going on for what, almost 12 years now. Mm -hmm. You know, like I already pre ordered my year. 10? 20 years, 2002 it started. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. So, 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 Right after like so many, I mean, I was like, but there's so much more. So we grew up with her, and so when I, I've been, I've been under contract to write *Among the Kids*. Um, it's supposed to launch. It's called *Best Friends Forever*. I can tell you that. Um, it's with Legend Studios Anime. They are we're just about to kickstart and everything. So we'll see. Um, and it's a group of eight girls, and we're gonna grow up with them. So I already know like what their adult lives are like, but I have to start them like in high school, and then we're gonna see how they remain best friends forever. So my long-term plan is to do this kind of thing, like we saw with Namco, where we see him grow up, become a dad, you know, become a husband. You know, I still want to know more about you know what Sakura's life is like, like you know, as a grown woman with a husband that's never home. You know what I'm saying? Like. I want that story. So I think that there are also a lot of characters that he grew in love with. Like I want a whole series just on them. Like no disrespect to Luffy. Naughty <laughs> <laughs> story. You know what I mean? And to see like what her adventure. You know, I think that there are these characters that aren't taken seriously. Women aren't taken seriously. The patriarchy is what it is. So that becomes the other part of like how things get presented and how they get received also. So I remember years ago, I said, no one talks about whether or not Wonder Woman ever needs a tampon. Like, what's up with that? <laughs> like, they write about her, but they don't ever really like write her. They're trying to check it out. Right. <laughs> okay. so, like, doesn't she get cramps? Like, doesn't she crave things every 20 years? And I said, you know, there's something about the way that the dimensionality of our interior lives are always left out. Mm -hmm. And there's always this gap. And I think even for like folks that might identify as trans women, that's even a bigger gap, right? Because that's a whole other interiority that we just don't have access to. So I would say, if you don't see it, make it yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you find somebody that's part of your tribe, support what they're doing. And get loud about it, right? I mean, I think yes. there's this amazing time where we all have platforms to say out loud all the stuff that we stand, um, we want, and, and we need to get even you know, deeper thoughts, like to, Uh, last 
one came out this month, uh, volume 11 came out literally a few weeks before the final volume, so I just need to wrap up this story. The only thing is, the last, the cover for the final volume is a huge spoiler. So, I mean, if you not that, that not in a bad way, but if you wanted to see how it ends and it has a happy ending, that's why the summer is a big <laughs> But it's uh, perfect world and then something's wrong with us, which I mentioned at Comic Con in November. Um, that finally got a few volumes this year. That one I always describe as a telenovela set in Japan. It is steamy, it is dramatic, it has suspense and a mystery. And it follows a young woman who is a wabashi confectioner, so she makes traditional Japanese um, sweets and pastries. And her childhood friend, who doesn't know that's her, because there's a whole murder mystery in the whole series, that both of them are trying to kind of figure out what happened in the actual so That one is one that you could, you have to kind of spoil a little bit, but. The, the man's father gets murdered. He thinks it's the girl's mother. And so both of them are trying to figure out what exactly happened that night. And um, it's amazing. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. Something's wrong with us. Something's wrong with us. Yeah. yeah. Something's wrong with us. Something's wrong with us. Yeah. And now we're going to spin off. So the story is still going. Okay. Apparently, there's even more things that are wrong. But. <laughs>
she finds out that she, he's her childhood friend. Now, the thing is, he's not a cop mm -hmm. So she reports her. He's a cop mm -hmm. He tells her, don't touch me. Don't come anywhere near me. You're going to lose my reputation. Mm -hmm. So she's come up and said, you have to be pure for my family. But then she's like, I want to get in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of really funny, like romantic comedy. And then whenever he goes to come said something, kind of like, he starts action. Sparkly roses put in that So at the end, there's like this little offshoot uh, comic strip about the roses. And the roses are waiting at the end of their like, oh, 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 this is happening, it's come up and it's sparkle. Right? <laughs> and then, like, the bed is in our speech, and it's like, oh, also. <laughs> so it's so funny, it's such a stupid thing. It makes fun of the show off of And it's like the girl is very set positive, and then she's trying to attempt the boy, but the boy is this. He's not really stupid, <laughs> but he's also kind of mm, misguided in his idea of being pure. Anyway, it's a super different kind of romantic comedy, and I found it really refreshing and fun. Um, the other one I'm going to say is um, if you really like Jose Jose, read the manga of Choco Kasaki. Help her shelter is in English now, and then uh, River Dead is another one that's been from her. I don't know what River Dead is about, but uh, Help her shelter is about model, an actress, and she was really beautiful. She's been doing a lot of slightly sketchy plastic mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. And as the surgery starts to break down, her face, her beauty starts to fade, her mind starts to degrade as well. So it's an interesting psychological drama, it's very female. You know? And she mm -hmm. does some pretty effed up things mm -hmm. to her people, all the people around her. But it's the scene of my home. Kyoko has got the influence of so many pleasant films. Oh, mm -hmm. But she's like the, she runs the roots. Um, I'm going to talk about the video later tonight, but Tennis is Crying Out by Tony Florida. So, so, the thing about them, the Crying Out is basically one of the, uh, she's a really strong feminist figure. The story about a teacher who had two sexual uh, assault trauma in her life. And then one of her students was a uh, boy who was assaulted by a woman. And they kind of like start this. Kind of complicated relationship with their own antagonistic opponent to each other. It is unflinching in its depictions and mm how -hmm. complicated it is. Like one of the characters in the high school girls tells the boy, I don't care, I mean, I'm not crazy, but I have, you know, she has big wounds. She says, you know, like, she tells him, I don't care if I'm your second child, just stay with me, right? And I thought, I, not to him, but you know, I feel like it's so relatable because I'm not anything wrong with my kids. But you know, at that time, you know, I want to talk to her. Mm -hmm. And so her writing mm -hmm. really made me think about a lot of the world, all of it, as a teenager. It was a super disturbing book, like, this part of me, that I, I can't stop thinking about. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the, the one with the actress who had yeah. the past surgery? Oh, how did you tell me? The House of Skelter? There's a movie of it, and it's pretty surreal. <laughs> You know, we're all always asking for the huge, like, and I read her after Ayodala, which is very different, but it gave me such a great range of, like, this is what Jose can be, like, Helter Skelter is super effed up. Um, <laughs> and this, and the illustration style is so different that I, like, fell in love. Uh, but I love, like, oh, we can have stories with adult women that are really messed up and, like, psychological and, all that kind of stuff, because we get like the romance, the friendship, but also um, this is disturbing, <laughs> but I love it. And like knowing that natural writing is out there, I think this is really amazing. So I definitely, and I'm, I, I read um, the Revenge of Scan, and it is another book to talk about. So I'm glad you're taking the Yeah, I would say. Okay, first off, I'm so obviously really busy. Um, I could, I, you know, sci-fi fun, um, I got the trophy. Oh, wow. And this is the original volume oh, one, wow. right? I got the nice one to look back. Um, trying to track down all of the volumes is an adventure in itself, so I'm still in the process of doing that. Um, one thing to say about sci-fi fun is because it's written in 19, you know, it starts in 1947, 
It's really like a post-war story of the Japanese housewife and the Japanese family. So it's a chance to get outside of the American propaganda about like, what happened with World War II and what their reality was like also. Um, it was also interesting for me because both of my grandfathers, who I don't think this one died before I was born and the other one died when I was two, they were both World War II veterans, but they're also living in Jim Crow America at the time. So to understand like what this war effort was and how it affected people on the ground, you know, um, what we hear on this side and what actually happened. Um, through Sadai Khan, I learned a lot about like what actually happened because she's the housewife, she's the eldest daughter, and she has to go and like do the food rationing and volunteering and their power out and their all of these other things. So I'm learning about like that and how that was affecting the people in you know, the communities that she was connected to. So it was an opportunity to hear from a woman's perspective also, and then on top of that, she's also got her family with her, not just her husband and her kids, but also her parents and her two younger siblings. So it's centered around her and her dealing with her family relationship and then what's happening in post war in Japan. And then it kind of modernizes along the way. So I'm still trying to track down the later volumes. I think there are, don't quote don't me, I think there are like 15 volumes total, maybe a little bit, maybe, maybe around there, but how many you can track down in English? Good luck. So me and Amazon have been taking it out a lot. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they do have a lot of the Japanese only that you can get, but not with the like with the English, you know, and then they charge them. So I've been finding them through like the second and third hand bookseller, but then it's like other than volume one and two, good luck. And then you know, then it's a matter of trying to make sure it's the right train, you know, the right form. Um, so that's been a lot of like fun for me, especially I hope if I ever get to Japan to go visit the museum that they have about her. I mean she has she has a new manual. So <laughs> Um, because she was the first um, woman on the show, um, professionally and nationally in Japan. So, you know, I always try to do all for the coming out. Um, aside from that, you know, I'm curious to see like what people here are going to be making and try to catch up with what everybody else is doing. But I think that there's still a lot of room to tell stories about women um, from various perspectives, you know, different class backgrounds. They don't all have to be rich and powerful and beautiful, they can see everyday girls, you know, everyday people. Um, but I think that there still has to be more that we can put through, either independently or maybe there's that commercial breakthrough. But the pressure is, when you're from a marginalized population, if it flops, then they don't want to take that risk anymore. So trying to find people that will support good stuff and not just put it out to make sales, I think it comes to other things. And there's a, I think there's a good enough, enough material that you could put out. It's just a matter of knowing where it is how to find it. And hopefully, Hello Barcada will be one of those places to help push it to the line. Thank you. Um, so we have about
whatever it is that you want to put on your syllabus, you can, if you can find a committee that wants to support your project. You know, because I had to fight to get through my dissertation. So, you know, there's that, there's that too, right? You're going to have those academic biases, but you got to figure out how does this get done, and then you can do the stuff you want to do moving on. So I appreciate the effort. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 